Hello, listeners. Buckle up for a new episode of The Science of Self, where you learn to improve your life from the inside out. Today is April 27th, 2023, and here's a few quick hits for today. It's Babe Ruth Day. That's the baseball player, not the candy bar. If you're looking for lunch suggestions, it's Prime Rib Day, and for dessert, Devil Dog Day. If you don't know what a devil dog is, you should find out. And if your coworkers are bringing a lot of family members to work today, it's Take Our Daughters and Sons to Work Day, so be prepared. And finally, Woody Woodpecker Day. Who knew? Today's episode, from Peter Holland's book, The Lifelong Learner, is about finding passion and intrinsic motivation for our day-to-day living. Intrinsic motivation is what drives us to do things simply because we want to do them. And passion is defined as a sort of positive energy that you can experience in multiple areas of your life. And we'll discuss a clear path to passion. CLEAR is an acronym developed by life coach Susanna Nusinen. It represents curiosity, learning, enthusiasm, awareness, and recognition in our path to passion. Thanks for joining us today. And this from Peter Holland's book, The Lifelong Learner. Achieving something that once seemed impossible is such an amazing feeling. And learning to do so involves stepping out of your comfort zone. Sure, it can be intimidating at first. A lot of us have experienced failure or had difficulties in the past and aren't eager to face it head on. But understanding that growth comes from pushing yourself beyond your limits and embracing challenges will go a long way on your journey. Instead of dwelling on your inability to learn and grow, Aim for progress by reframing failures as just a part of the process. It shows that you're trying. As you move ahead and start searching for your ultimate passion, you can look back with pride, knowing that you took those initial steps forward yourself. But how do we initiate that internal drive to pursue what is most important to us? How do we ignite our intrinsic motivation to reach our passions? As a young, curious, wide-eyed girl, Jane loved nothing more than exploring the world around her. She was constantly asking questions and trying to figure out how things worked. Nothing could dampen her thirst for knowledge and learning new things. Her parents were always impressed by her intelligence and creativity, and they did their best to encourage her natural curiosity. One day, when Jane was about ten years old, She came across a book on physics in her parents' library. She quickly became fascinated by the concepts it described, the beguiling images of the cosmos, theories on time travel and time dilation, the quirkiness of quarks, the peculiar behavior of matter and light. She spent hours reading about the laws of motion and energy. Soon enough, physics became Jane's favorite subject in school. She loved learning about the universe and discovering new ways to understand it. Throughout high school and college, Jane continued to study physics with enthusiasm. She even started doing research in quantum mechanics, which was one of the most complex fields of physics, but no matter how hard she tried, she couldn't seem to break into that field as a researcher. Finally, after years of frustration, Jane decided to take a different approach. Instead of focusing purely on her own ambitions, she started helping other students learn physics. She expanded her skill set and found that she enjoyed teaching just as much as researching, and eventually became a professor at a major university. Jane's story is a great example of how intrinsic motivation can turn us into lifelong learners hell-bent on discovering our true passion. We all have experienced intrinsic motivation at some point. Think about a time when you lost track of time because you were completely absorbed in what you were doing. Maybe it was painting, playing an instrument, reading a book, or organizing your closet. Intrinsic motivation is often driven by a sense of satisfaction, pride, or achievement. Alternatively, 
it could be something you find enjoyable or fun. For example, many people are intrinsically motivated to exercise because they enjoy the endorphin rush that comes with it. By staying curious, intrinsically motivated, and following her instincts, Jane ended up finding something that made her incredibly happy. Intrinsic motivation is essential for lifelong learning. This type of motivation fuels the desire to keep learning and exploring new things, even if it's outside your comfort zone. It's great when extrinsic rewards, like grades or a promotion, come along. But in the end, if you don't have that passion for learning inside you, then it can be difficult to stay committed over time. Passion, according to life coach Susanna Nusenen, is a sort of positive energy that you can experience in multiple areas in your life. The most common interpretation of passion in organizational studies is teleological, implying a powerful, purposive motivation to achieve an end goal. It's the joy and the internal drive Jane felt when she'd immersed herself in quantum mechanics. It's the joy you feel when you pick up your favorite racket, your favorite book, your beloved guitar, or your paintbrush. This joy bubbles forth from unbridled curiosity fueled by intrinsic motivation. Jane's source of inspiration that sowed the very first seeds of her passion came from within. Intrinsic motivation is internal. It's when you do something because you want to, not because you have to. You're driven by a personal interest, or enjoyment in the task itself. Karen Putz explained the five steps of passion and how knowing where you are can help you hone and develop them further. I will also explain how intrinsic motivation plays a key role in each stage. In the clear path to passion, the first stage we have is curiosity. Consider Jane's love for asking questions and hiding in her parents' library. This is the birthplace of your passion. Then comes learning and enthusiasm. Jane's desire and enthusiasm to learn anything and everything she could about quantum mechanics. This is the stage that ignites and increases intrinsic motivation and elicits enthusiasm, thus allowing significant connections to take place, sparking Jane's interest and her curiosity. Along comes awareness. This is where you'll commit to forever keep your passion alive and keep it flowing. If we look at Jane's example once again, we'll notice how she kept herself intrinsically motivated and pursued her passion in all its forms until she found a fit that worked for her. The trick here is to never stop learning and letting your passion grow. Lastly, we have recognition. This is where people take one look at your life and know how your passion makes you stand out. For example, Jane will forever stand out as a quantum physicist because that's what defines her. Jane's curiosity about how the world worked on a subatomic level was what set the wheels of discovering her true passion in motion. Her joy was understanding the universe on a deeper level than most of us. Intrinsic motivation was the driving force in reaching her goals. It was what created the curiosity, the passion, the desire, and the ambition to pursue learning what she loved most. People like Jane, who were driven by intrinsic motivation, find their work meaningful because they dedicate themselves, give their all, and solve difficult and important problems. These people are genuinely motivated by a desire to learn and grow, to find meaning, and, most importantly, joy that contributes to a greater good. Extrinsic motivation, on the other hand, is our desire to engage in an activity in order to obtain rewards or avoid punishments. In other words, we are motivated by an activity's instrumental value. Extrinsic aspirants regard financial wealth, physical beauty, and notoriety or celebrity as more significant or worthy aims in life. Personal growth, community, and meaningful relationship goals, on the other hand, fall under the category of intrinsic ambitions, 
which are more likely to predict positive outcomes, such as work satisfaction and well-being. According to a Deloitte study from 2014, 87% of Americans felt unable to deliver their full potential at work, owing to a lack of passion. A lack of passion is a direct consequence of a lack of intrinsic motivation. If there's no internal motivation, there's no curiosity. If there's no curiosity, there's no drive, no enthusiasm, no desire to learn or pursue something new. Because intrinsic motivation comes from inside, a sense of fascination with life and the learner's world is highly valued and necessary. The intrinsic learner prioritizes a sense of accomplishment and mastery. They're not dependent on other people's thoughts, and they know there are things they can't fully control. Intrinsically motivated people are lifelong learners, as they never tire of learning more and more about what they love. Nurturing and maintaining intrinsic motivation are lifelong skills that students must develop in the 21st century, where they must independently obtain and analyze vast volumes of information. It's the responsibility of educators to employ numerous motivational tactics in order to impact a student's ability to find their passions. In the context of lifelong learning, intrinsic motivation is far more powerful than extrinsic motivation. According to research, pupils who are intrinsically motivated to study perform better academically and finish more years of education than those who are not intrinsically motivated. Several studies have repeatedly shown that intrinsic drive leads to greater persistence, psychological well-being, and performance. So, how do you go about increasing your intrinsic motivation and discover your lifelong passion? Let's move on to discuss some ways you can do this. How to Increase Intrinsic Motivation in Your Life The Self-Determination Theory, SDT, of motivation, proposed by Detchi and Ryan, assumes that people are, by nature, active and self-motivated, curious and interested, vital and willing to succeed, since success itself is personally pleasant and rewarding. Circumstances and settings, on the other hand, can leave us alienated and robotic or passive and dissatisfied. But there's good news for you. You have the power to change your circumstances for the better. Satisfying Our Basic Psychological Needs The three fundamental psychological requirements identified by the SDT, according to Susan Fowler, are foundational to all human beings and our ability to flourish. Each one must be met for engaged, passionate people to do excellent work in any field. You can start by building supportive environments that encourage autonomy, competence, and relatedness, resulting in increased intrinsic motivation all around. Creating an environment that promotes autonomy the capacity of a person to pursue their own values and interests, might sound daunting, but it can be done with a few simple steps. First, it's important to find ways to build trust. This could include giving employees more freedom in their job roles and tasks. You could also ensure that teams have access to resources, ideas, and the level of support they need to succeed. Additionally, Providing autonomy requires a leader who's willing to listen to employees and their ideas, including how things are done or changes that can be made. Last but not least, autonomy builds when employees feel respected for the decisions they make. By setting up these key foundations for success, your team will thrive in an atmosphere of autonomy. Achieving success often comes down to having individual goals, and those goals need to be defined if they are going to drive an individual's progress. While it's important to strive for these objectives, how one chooses to reach them is paramount. Taking the carrot method of attainment, with incentives like rewards and social recognition, can help frame goals as essential while avoiding pressure. 
This allows people more autonomy in how they decide to pursue their ambitions, which encourages intrinsic motivation rather than just doing something because they have to. Ultimately, goal setting can be an effective tool in anyone's success story. You just need to present it in a way that makes people excited to take on the challenges instead of feeling obligated. Developing a sense of relatedness to others is an essential part of living a meaningful life. You need to take the time to strengthen your relationships and deepen the connections you have with others. Frequently ask yourself and others around you, are you happy in life? Does your heart yearn for more? Then, ask yourself the same questions. One important step is to connect work with a higher cause, such as political, moral, spiritual, or corporate values. It can help give you greater motivation and reward for the work you do. It's important to identify how you feel about what you are doing. Being aware of emotions involved in our day-to-day -day activities can contribute to deeper levels of relatedness. It's far easier to have strong relationships when we can empathize and understand the motivations of those around us. Embracing many aspects of life together leads to richly connected interactions that result in strong relationships and more fulfilling lives all around. Competence entails the need to believe you are capable of reaching desired results is essential when it comes to building your passion. You need to have both the right skills for your chosen task and the opportunity to show them off. Start by making sure there are ample learning resources available. With today's technology, there are more learning resources available than ever before. From online classes to YouTube tutorials, there are so many ways to learn new skills and get access to valuable information. And it's not just the Internet that can provide resources. Libraries still offer an incredible selection of textbooks and other reference materials for those who prefer more traditional ways of studying. It can be so easy to get caught up in chasing results and measuring our efforts based on the outcomes. Set learning goals to focus on the building blocks that are needed for success instead of simply looking at the end product. This approach will encourage you to reflect on your progress and adjust your strategy as needed. Let's look at John's journey to help you understand the importance of setting up learning goals. John had always been a bit of a slacker when it came to school. He would usually do just enough to get that B without pushing himself too hard. This semester, however, he decided to set some healthy learning goals for himself. He wanted to make sure he was actually learning and not just focusing on getting a B to make his parents happy. To start off, John created a study schedule for himself and stuck to it religiously. He made sure to take breaks and allow himself time to relax, but overall, he was really proud of how well he was doing. His grades went from B's to A's, and he started feeling more confident in his abilities. The best part was that John was actually enjoying his classes now. He found that he was learning a lot more than he ever had before. And the most amazing part? He could still goof off with his friends on weekends without feeling guilty. Setting healthy learning goals for himself turned out to be the best decision John ever made. Focusing on learning rather than results made all the difference in John's life. Stop focusing on achievements and start focusing on your needs and your growth instead. Hope you learned something from that extract from Peter Holland's book, The Lifelong Learning. It's a longer episode than usual but it was difficult to find a breaking point, so we rolled the entire section. Let's let our brains relax on that topic for a minute, and then we'll review the takeaways from today's episode. We mentioned at the top of the episode that today was Babe Ruth Day. Babe Ruth signed his big league contract in 1914. Nine years later, in 1923, the Yankees built the stadium that they dubbed the house that Ruth built. And 12 years later, 
Babe Ruth retires. 24 years after they built Yankee Stadium, Babe Ruth Day was first celebrated in the venerable Yankee Stadium. That, of course, has since been demolished and replaced with something bigger and better, I'm sure. And on the topic of super stadiums, if you were affected by the recent Ticketmaster meltdown trying to get your Taylor Swift concert tickets, no need to worry, because today, bipartisan U.S. lawmakers introduce one bill requiring ticket merchants to disclose hidden fees up front, and another similar bill introduced intended to produce more competition in the ticketing market. So, don't worry, Congress is watching out for us. Now, back to it. Here's the takeaways from today's episode. Intrinsic motivation is essential for lifelong learning, and it fuels the desire to keep learning new things, even when it's outside your comfort zone. This innate internal drive is what fuels your passion. Passion itself is a positive energy that you can experience in multiple areas of your life. Most commonly, passion is interpreted in the sense of the teleological, implying a powerful, purposive motivation to achieve an end goal. Intrinsic motivation comes from within, clearly, and is when you do something because you want to, not because you have to. You're driven by personal interest or enjoyment in the task itself. For example, learning to bake simply because you enjoy it. And this has been The Science of Self. I'm Russell, founder of Newton Media Group, producer of The Science of Self. You can find us at newtonmg.com, and you can find the author Peter Hollins at bit.ly slash Peter Hollins. Today, we celebrate the birthdays of Lizzo, an incredibly musician, Melinda Melrose, and Patrick Stump. It's kind of a musical day, isn't it? And finally, today is the birthday of Coretta Scott King, born in 1927, who said, The greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. 